This is one. This is one of those. This is one of those. This is one of those chairs. that's like. It's gonna turn, turn, turn into a bouquet yeah. of flowers. Yeah. It, gonna... I think it's meant to be for like original vintage 1920s <clears throat> Frenchman. Frenchman. This is a uh, 60, 60 kilos. 60 kilos exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a decoration chair. Yeah. <laughs> so, much. all right, guys. Well, we're here. Yeah. Podcast Hello. a lot more handsome. Richard joined us today. Bam. So I did my hair today. <laughs> Me too. And he's ten too. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> the ten red shirt is on. Well, this week we're gonna jump into. Uh, we want to go through the program Richard just wrapped up first. Yeah. So Richard's been finishing up a program that we had talked about before, but we kind of now have the yep. uh, aftermath, if you will. It's easier to explain after you've run, run through it. After you you've know, done it. Yeah, yeah, quite exactly. a few yeah. people yeah. through it. So, But Richard had a program that was a kind of a crash course, beginner's course on the strong fit, your type of way of addressing anxiety, kind of? Yeah, it, it, was, it was interesting because we had the lockdown, of course, and it kind of happened... Not out of nowhere, but it happened everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, I offered my services for the coaches in the mentoring program and go talk to their gym members. And one of the biggest things that kept coming up, and I was doing two, three calls a week, was talking to, you know, CrossFit gym members and just people that would join the calls about their anxiety of being at home all the time, not knowing not to, what to do with the energy, with the fights building up, just kind of everything kind of the stress building up in their daily routines. And so I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to take in everything I've kind of learned and how to put it into a practical application. Um, I think that Julian does a great job of talking about all these concepts and people understand them very well. And then as soon as we go, hey, let's apply them, they go, it's Wait, theoretical, what? isn't it? Yes, I thought so it was that theoretical. Yeah. That's what we're talking about, you know. And so and that's, that was pre-COVID as well. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you've been doing the anxiety stuff for, for a while. while. Yeah, like, and so we, he started what in um, Australia, right? In Australia, yeah. That's where that's we kind of where we started you working at panic with attacks. I remember. Yeah, we, uh, tried to give myself a panic attack. Yeah, and it's, so and it's been succeeded. it's been an obsession. I get obsessed with things. Yes. <laughs> so it's been a good year and a half. Year and a half, two years of just yeah, constant. Years, right? yeah. That's basically all my mind kind of thinks yeah. about, and 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 more so than the theoretical and peer-reviewed articles scenario i think of it as how can i work with a human being that's having this mm -hmm. and talk to them like a human being that understands that this is the hamstring and this is the upper dorsimus and you yeah, know yeah, the brain yeah. does one thing and <laughs> you know what i mean like people have no clue and so yeah. when we come with all these elitist terms and we start having these conversations they sound really well and they give them hope, but then when it comes to the actual application, there's no way for them to go at it. Yeah. So I said, I'm gonna develop something, and this is where Dea came in, because my structure, creating a structure and a timeline and things, sometimes I go on rants and I kind of start going somewhere else, Is that's my, my downfall. Uh, so Dea sat me down and said, you're sitting down here all day and you're gonna write down the outline of how you would take somebody through this. And that's what I did, and it was, I think it was a great turnout. Um, you know, the first thing I did is I let uh, the expectations of I'm not going to cure your anxiety. I'm yeah. not here and this is not yeah. a magic pill. Like this is an applications course and you must apply what I'm giving you and experiment with it. Otherwise, there will be no results geared from this except yeah. you feeling like you've heard me talk a whole lot. And that's really what we did every week is I would give them homework. We would talk about a simple concept that StrongFit has and kind of create practical applications and where you see this in real life, whether it's work meetings at home with your wife or with your husband or your kids, uh, going to the gym and you know having failed attempts at a back squat or a deadlift and creating the fear out of creating those, out of attempting those lifts again because you're like, my back's gonna fucking hurt. Yeah. I know it's gonna hurt, so why should I try it? And what happens as soon as you go to the bar? Your back hurts. So it was just a very simple, practical application as to how we can start handling uh, overwhelming scenarios yeah. and how to actually learn to deal with the stress, not just evade the stress and try that. And not just training. Like yeah, outside in of real too, life. Yeah. So Wasn't well, a lot of that training kind of for the overwhelming situation anyways? Is it, it's, it is kind of a yeah. safer way yes. to do it. You can get yourself into a situation where your body's screaming at you, your nervous system screaming right. at you, and it's a lot better to get used to and build on that there than say to not at work. And to not panic. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Panic. Yeah. And so, I mean, it, for me, I had a blast. I, I it was, I, I cried on my last call. So I, had, I like, you start creating a connection. And even though we had, you know, 60 people in the, in the groups and I would do two calls during the day, 
like you start to hear stories from one person to the other one. And then like the, the, the group itself was awesome how much they were. I think everyone was in a safe space where they were in it together. So the, the sharing experiences and the growth that I think a lot of people had was awesome. So that was, yeah. that was the anxiety course. I think it was, a, it was a great starting point for people that have heard the podcast and think things are simple, but they never actually apply any of it. Yeah. Like we have people that were on there that have heard about the neoprene training for over a year. And just haven't They've never it. even bought a, a suit. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, guys, give it a try. So it, it, it's, it's fascinating when you go, this is the homework for the week and this is the community and we're all doing this together. Like we I had 70% of people going, I'm very nervous about the neoprene, but here it goes. And yeah. it, was a, it was a great support group to get people to do things. Nervous about what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so, no, I don't mean to trash talk people. The, literally, I think, I, I think the nerves about neoprene are always about being weird. Okay. I and I but, think it's, okay, it's okay. selective <laughs> hearing. Maybe. That's, that's you know true. what I mean? No, no, but or, it, or at it's least a, there's some of it. It's selective hearing when you did mm. the podcast and you're like, it made me freak out. And you're like, I don't want to freak out, so I'm not going to do it. That is true. Maybe. That's because you have anxiety. We're not going to get out of that one. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, maybe there is a little bit of that that um, that that seeing Julian go. Oh, I put this on and I t fucking freaked out in the deal. It, right. it does maybe put people don't put right, that in the context. But they don't train that, like me either, yeah. so it doesn't get, it doesn't work <laughs> like that. Yeah, so I mean, it was it was interesting just to see the the different response of. So maybe before we go into what you saw and all that stuff, let, uh, first of all, people that have not attended, yeah. the other people I should have but didn't, uh, break it down like first. For example, first week, what do you what do you start yeah, with? Yeah, so first week we basically. It's the introduction of the course. So I set expectations on my side, on their side. I try to break the ice with a lot of uh, rated R humor. Um, and we talked about basically what affects the nervous system. So nutrition, movement, breathing. Uh, a lot of the next eight weeks are basically a buildup on those three. So each week I add in a new thing for them to, a new challenge for them to add into and keep going for the next eight weeks to mm -hmm. see how it goes. So rather than going like you, 30 days, we're cutting everything out, no stimulants. I said, hey Two guys, <laughs> I said, hey guys, listen, <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is some people, you know, need to step by step. So the first week was that is we need to move in order to express our energy that's kept up inside. Yeah, yeah, breathing can help us quite a bit. So we went through a few different breathing patterns that I like to use when people start to stress out, moving, so on and so forth. Uh, nutrition was very, very, very basic. I didn't go into when, where, I just said, guys, keep it very simple. Proteins are at night, carbohydrates only when you're going between before training, after training, vegetables all day long if you want, uh, fruits before training, during training, fats as much as you want. And that was it. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't no, want I like to complicate it. it. You give less anxiety than yeah. by giving like and so and shit like that. People started asking, I was like, this isn't the space for that. This is about yeah. simplicity. Yeah. So everything is me simple. Movement. I'm gonna keep it simple. I don't care what kind of training you're doing. You have a sandbag, we're gonna do a sandbag carry. And we wanna, and so it, it was basically a lesson being learned. So I, I, my coaching is always under cueing and then explaining the lesson yeah. that came from it. So the first workout was my sandbag carry workout that I love to do with everybody. Um, so you made them do workout specific for all this, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And then explain it afterwards. So we did a sandbag workout where it was like, the first half was fucking, my back was blowing up, yeah. I couldn't breathe, I had to drop it. And then walking back, it was like, it was a warm up. I yeah. was like, okay, so then we can yes. start talking about uncertainty versus certainty. Yeah. And so this is what this is happening. And then basically, it was a buildup of movement, breathing, nutrition. Each week we had a new concept. So we started going through selfish brain theory. So where was it that you quit on the sandbag workout? Where is it that you're quitting on your daily task? Where is it that you're finding your sympathetic fixes? And so each week I add in a new right, thing. So really it was two things. First of all, not giving people anxiety, yeah. which seems to be a key. Yeah. You don't have anxiety, don't give yourself anxiety. <laughs> yeah. That seems to be a big one. Right. And then after that it was, uh, yeah, it was moving. It was expressing, expressing. it was actually doing the yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, so if you told him from the start, I'm sure, like if you don't do the stuff. It's not gonna work. Yeah. There's no point in it. And so I said that, I made that very clear and it was funny, like week four, there was some guy that jumped in and he goes, well, I didn't do this because of this, and I'm not going to do that because I'm really happy with this. And I was like, so then I don't know what you're yeah. coming in here Why for. You're here yeah. um, you know, and, You've and, heard and, that a lot, by the way. And, and, I, and I think, again, it's people that want to support the strong fit or they want to try and get deeper understandings of it. 
But for me, the people that were actually following through was it was great because you started to see people going, well, at nighttime, I start having chocolate or I start having this or I start doing that. And I was like, okay, so in the evening, are you supposed to go out and socialize? So maybe it's the, the, the anxiety is coming from wanting to socialize mm -hmm. and your fix is going here because you don't want to go out and meet people. So how do we start approaching that part of it? Yeah. How do we, you know, and so we, it was, it was really therapy. cool. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool just getting to see people being able to open up in a group of 40, especially with, when you're talking 60. about anxiety. Yeah, I mean, two groups, groups, yeah, two, yeah. two groups, right? Two so, groups so, yeah. But it was really cool to see people open up and feel safe in that environment. Um, and realizing that a lot of the anxiety they have, they're giving themselves. Yeah, and it was cool because towards the end, you're like, you understand why you didn't want to do the task. Like, yeah. Because it gave you stress and you, therefore you decided to avoid it rather than do it. Yes. Or you understand why your back blew up because you were enduring the workout rather than wanting to do the workout. You're trying to prove to me what, the, what this is yes. rather than understanding it for yourself. And so that was a big one that, that I saw, especially when we talked about the wheel and the phylogenetic hierarchy, was people were like, I don't feel like I gave a hard enough fight today. I was like, but who's gauging your fight yeah. for the day? Yeah. Like, where is the, like, who has the parameters yes. of how much? Fight? What are the parameters, by well, the way? Because we never define them. Yeah, either, and, so, and, yeah. and I think we've talked about that in the past, though, and maybe that can get misinterpreted, where it is good to know at the end of that day, like, I could have fought harder. The issue yeah. is, the only thing that matters now is the next one. Exactly. <laughs> at that point. And, yeah, and be so, frustrated. And so that's, yeah. a, that's a, but, but I also um, wanted to point out with this, too, is this wasn't something where, it had to uproot people's training for eight weeks either. Right, no. It's, it's kind of a, I liked that you did, when I was looking through, it was a very, very specific focus. Yeah. It, you thought it, it was one thing, it was That's simple, it. and it sure shit wasn't going to be easy. Right. But somewhere in there was, like, the people are going to be kind of bounced off that experience, right. and then having them kind of feed that back to you. The The feedback we got from the program was just it was like, awesome. exceptional. Yeah, it was really cool. I was really excited. I'm excited for when we do the next one and I've, I've fine-tuned a few things and changed to give less information because I start talking and all of a sudden the calls were like almost two hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you yeah. know, but everybody was still engaged. It's like, how do you not keep going? Yeah. You know, that was, that was the biggest thing is the engagement that we got from it was awesome. Like, yeah. oh man, it was, it was just cool to connect with people again, even though it was through Zoom calls and everything. But just seeing the growth in people from week one to week eight was awesome. It, yeah. was, it was phenomenal. What did you see at the beginning? Like, uh, how did they approach the notion of anxiety? I'm curious. Like, were they like blocking it off or saying, I'm not anxious, I'm just here to learn? Or uh, did you have people like opening up right away saying like, look, those are the issues that I have? How did they look at it? Did you have mostly people coming from their own anxiety? I think it was mainly people wanting to, I had some people that came just for their anxiety and the anxiety of the, of those around them. Like I had a couple that signed up that for the kid has massive panic attacks and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you know, I was like, this is like a very beginner yeah. stage, but maybe I can help you understand certain things of, of what's going on. So sometimes the conversations will go a little bit deeper than they should. Um, but yeah, most of, most of the people I think came to learn more, right? So for me, it's anxiety is not having mental and physical awareness of the present state of being present yep. and so when i look at that is that's i didn't want to classify it as anxiety i just wanted to say this is a course where you can become more mentally and physically aware so okay. yeah. well and that present. was that's something we always have had a hard time with too is definition of anxiety is really is more yeah. or less a fucking laundry list of symptoms right and, and it's just it's not that it's not and that all catchy of the launch of program that's yeah. like that's like you know and all of them are about stress worrying or, about something right. that isn't there yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i think like the biggest thing that i said is i'm not here to coddle you and i'm not I'm not here to help you avoid the stress that you're supposed to be dealing with. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing that really helped a lot of people. Because like some people would start asking me questions and they're like, oh, well, I'm in the fucking hot seat. And then we'd go at it and I was like, this is you. Like I, there's no magic words that I can do that will make you do this. Yeah, I don't like, know you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I, and I do, like, Daya catches me all the time. And that's why I think I connected so with all of them because I can relate to them so much. I was like, guys, the first three weeks of fucking COVID, I was like, well, I'm not doing seminars. I'm not doing coaches weeks. I got to train twice a week with you guys. I got to stay semi-healthy. Yeah. But fuck it, vacation time. I'm going to go have Ben and Jerry's every <laughs> night. Like Day and I were ordering Ben and Jerry's every night. Like that's my sympathetic fix. Like that's my go-to. So I had what I, they could relate to me in that sense. And that's the one thing that I do when I coach and I work with people is like, I'm not here to pretend I have a perfect life. I do not. 
and the sympathetic fixes I have, I will be upfront about them and why I why I avoid them. Mm-hmm. And you know, like that, I had that conversation today. I was like, hey, I'm avoid. I was sorry, I was avoiding it. And this is what I was doing it to avoid it. And so, like, I think that helped open up a lot. I was very vulnerable in that sense of, guys, protocol. I try to follow for the most part. The big thing I try to follow is proteins at night. Like that yeah. thing is for sure. Yeah. But if if Dave says, hey, we're going to three star Michelin, I'm like, hey guys, wine. This like going to Italy. I was yeah. like, hey guys, I'm gonna have wine. Like I'm not gonna avoid that either. You know what yeah. I mean? Plus, it, for a lot of people, it give you more anxiety trying to avoid a goddamn good yeah. time in Italy. Yeah. Than to, than but then, but I also I also spoke about if if you're having this situation where it's like, hey, I want a piece of chocolate before I go in my evening Disney December walk and then come home and have my protein and you're going to give yourself a fucking hard time about having that chocolate then there's a deeper issue that you need to deal yeah. with for me it's like I'm going to have a pint of Ben and Jerry's and I'm going to wake up the next morning going fuck that was yeah. a good pint of Ben and Jerry's well I think that is, <laughs> but yeah but that's a foundation of anxiety right? well, there's, there's, something, yeah. Yeah. there's something interesting that too with you know with some of the groups that I coach there's you'll you'll have that with some kind of, well I'm having a real hard time I'm not really sure picking an accessory based on the weakness during this exercise I don't really feel and the answer is well then fucking just do a thing that you want to do in that place Peak one yeah yeah <laughs> like don't worry about it like yeah and, and like at that point if, like if there's nothing wheels falling off then why are you stressing yourself out right. that there's not a problem worth assessing yeah. And, yeah, and, and 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 that then like like that um that process of assigning that high of a value or piling that stress onto a little situation but um, that, that's that's on me that's because what i talk about is so theoretical it always makes you feel like you're failing if you don't do the thing perfectly every yeah. time and it's true that i stick 99 percent of the time to protocol and my stuff yeah, and everything right. but also not everybody has my life and I don't think anybody wants it honestly <laughs> right uh, no, no well, and, and, I, and I stole people like that I think that was one of the first things the first conversation we had I was like guys this is about you learning about yourselves it's yes. not about yeah, yeah, yeah. my way will never work for you guys because yeah you guys will be wrecked on the fourth day yeah like if you don't believe me come out and drink with me <laughs> or work out with me like come work out with me for four days in a row yeah Five days. what is it that you wanted to do a post because we can say it on the podcast you wanted to do a have you ever been victimized, victimized by, by Richard's Richard's if, you, if you've ever been personally victimized by Richard's <laughs> partying abilities exactly I mean, by, I by, by, me too by Richard Richard's pores Rip, like like it is it is almost legendary at Coach's Week, the Coach's well, Night. It is legendary. Yeah, the number of people he killed. Night. Don't yes. try to keep up with Do Richard. Do not challenge Richard to drinking. Because <laughs> it's, it's not, it's... Or training. training. Little don't, Dan, don't... Yeah, yeah, okay, you, we'll think, you think a heavy imam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah you you, you want to do a heavy imam for That's as long as possible with Richard? I just, I don't think that yeah. you win no matter who yeah, you are. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's, but again, that's my mindset, right? So people have a really hard time and I don't expect them to understand my mindset because they weren't on the side of the mountain. Like they weren't yeah, in those yeah. situations where for me, like I, like I sickly got joy out of being on the side of the mountain almost. Like, you know what I mean? Like once I accepted the death and I was like, no, fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to stay in this world. And like that whole process for me was a learning experience. And yeah, there was ups and downs, but I kind of, I enjoy that brink of the stakes are high. Yeah, and the, like the, if the stakes aren't high enough, I get bored and I'll, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can have it. But when the stakes get up there, oh man, that's And the fun. challenge is monumental. Yeah, and yeah. so like <laughs> like the drinking stuff, like Deus told me and I've stopped, I've calmed down, <laughs> you know, but like we went to Barcelona and we were out and this is like and a group right of, back. <laughs> yeah, these are, this is a group of just like Spanish and Mexicans and Venezuelans like, and they love to have a good time. I think by the second day, they're like, Richard, just go home. Like, we're done. Can you just go home? <laughs> You're just destroying the movie. Because yeah. I was like, but you why? You guys told me you were coming here for a party week. So we're going to do a party week. So that's a week of party. <laughs> yeah, but you have if to find a way. Right, but, yeah. but like during Coaches Week, like we're I here to learn as much as we can about who you are and what coach you are and how do we apply the principles practically. So all of that, I think, involves the coach's night out where you truly get to learn who you are. Like, where is your work <laughs> ethic? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'll go out with you guys and have a great time, but I will be there early the next day and I'm ready to work out and I'm ready to coach because that's a, that's a personality trait. That's something that you get, you truly get to understand the characteristics of the person. So that's why I like the coach's night out. And, and coach's, and coach's night out for coach's week, what Richard really likes too is that hanging longer than you and going harder than you just and then and then getting there and just making sure that you know that he feels better than you and is a been a better this isn't a challenge <laughs> no i 
<laughs> That's not his favorite part. His favorite part is the next morning when he, he's there at nine o'clock saying, "Are you guys ready?" Yep. And everybody's like, uh, and he's like "I'm ready." I've, and then I've, he murders I've, everybody. I've I've been to some of those, and man, those are mornings where I'm like, "God damn it! What kind of superpower does this guy have?" Because because I can't even fake it at that. Point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's when he enjoys it. <laughs> no, but I I think like I don't care if you drink or don't drink. It's about going together as a group like it's so much stronger like i've had coaches week where people just come learn go home and do nothing and it's such a boring time there's no connections made there's no long lasting experience there's nothing out of it people invest a lot of money and i want to give them that yeah. and so going out i don't care if you don't drink i don't need you to drink but come out hang out let's have a conversation Like some of the best coaches weeks is we start at 9 a.m. and we go home at midnight. Mm -hmm. And even though we're out drinking or eating or doing this or doing that, we're still talking about coaching. We're talking about philosophy. We're talking about movement. We're talking about that's where like the real about who you good are. shit just comes out. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons that um, for coaches week for me and I think a lot of the coaches that have been around is what's so valuable is kind of the connections you make. Yeah. As far as like the, the yeah. network that you build and then those people during those experiences, they understand you, not just your fucking advertisements on Instagram or something. Right. And, um, but I think it's really important that shared experience and then building that common network is a thing that we could do from Coaches Week because we had at that point, you had to know the deal, show up to a seminar, have been, right. been to, been to yeah. a seminar and then do Coaches Week to do Coaches Week. And the reason that I think this anxiety stuff in a lot of our programs, at least these ones like here, are a guided experience as opposed to on paper, here you go, know, yeah. is that like that dialogue and sharing the experience with other people and right. in a group with other people, hearing their questions and a, that, ba that back and forth, I think, is yeah. extremely valuable, except this sits at a anybody don't have to have done seminar. This is an entry level kind right. of way to kind of get in there and share this yeah. experience and this walkthrough with those for, people. For sure. It's a ayahuasca ceremony yeah. in a way. Like yeah. You need a guide. I mean, you yeah. need a guide to bring you. And that's yeah. what coaches with the idea is for you to realize where you are as a human being by the end of it. Yeah. yeah. You can't get better otherwise. Yeah. You have to know where you are. A yeah. lot of the anxiety with that too, by the way. Is, where are you in your life? Yeah. It's most, it's for the biggest sure. source of anxiety is that you're not where you think you are in your life. Yeah. That's, I think, the biggest source yeah. of all. Yeah. 100%. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, what we've seen everywhere. Those stagnant points. And I think right now, especially with everything happening, like people yeah. just get fucking lost. And where right, is it that you're supposed you to go? Where is the growth? Where is this? Where is that? And uh, I hate to be the dick, but there's so many people out there that just love to scream and create these images of things that just don't help people. Yeah. And it's, it's like I had the assessment yesterday. And it's just like, Uh, I just yeah I just, that shit like just pisses me off like that's where for me like I had uh, two weeks in, in Italy and and you know I, I needed to kind of I, I, I was at a stagnant point where I was like I don't know what where am I supposed to go from here and and I, and I realized one thing like I love having experiences for people whether it's like you guys come out to eat at mm -hmm. the house like there needs to be movement passion action, fucking behind yeah, it dude yeah. like Put your oomph behind it. You know what I mean? And so I had this guy that contacted me during quarantine. He's like, hey, Richard, uh, I found you guys and I saw a couple of videos and podcasts and I love what you guys are doing. Um, basically, I've been everywhere. And he just put, he just said, I've been everywhere. We're not going to tell um, the names, but he yeah. gave you specific yeah. names of people. Yesterday well he did. But the email yes, said, yeah. I've been everywhere. Uh, my only other option is you or surgery. That's it. So he had back pain for how long? It's been 10 years now. And the last two years, you say he spent... Last three years, he has spent 60,000 plus pounds. Pounds on British specialist pounds. toward his back. Yep. Because he had, he's, you were saying he's had a seven all day. Seven. That's the lowest. Yes. On average, a seven. And when I say one to 10, I'm like, 10, you can't get out of bed. Seven is miserable. Like, that's yeah. just... Like, you could see the guy walking, and he's afraid to take a step yeah. because the back's going to blow up, or there's going to be, like, and I've been there. Like, I've, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, that, that's why I probably like it could relate so well. Uh, but, yeah, so basically, he's like, I've been from the top specialist in countries. I've paid out. I've shelled out. He's Dutch, and, right? Uh, Dutch, yeah. And every single time that, I mean, he's gone all over the world, Australia, U.S., Canada, Netherlands, U.K., you name it, he's sought it out. And, of course... We were at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> always, man. We're always the last one. I was like, we need to start building our stepping stones. Do we use too many F words? 
Is that yeah, it? like at some point, like I'm the witch doctor. No, I think so I think that and, not even, and, and not I was even having the conversation doctor. with them, and it, it's people are very good at selling without the delivery. Yeah, yeah it's a package. So it's yeah. always this whole package of yeah, let's do this and just keep squatting and doing this. And as soon as something goes wrong, we've talked about this over and over again. Yeah. They go, "You're not doing it the right way." And he's like, yeah, "You no look shit. at the video." And I'm doing it how you told me to do it. Like I sent you the video, you said that looks good, and it was just over and over and over again. And so, but they never addressed the problem anyway. Right. They yeah. made him do a little bit of glute work, a little bit of glute mid, a little bit of this, probably mash a little bit. And but it wasn't do that. Shit. It's, yeah. So he knew his psoas is weak, and so I'm like, okay, let's just raise your leg, and you know, and and he's like, okay, and he's sitting there. And he's trying to get the leg to go up, and the leg's going all over the fucking place. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I said, "Get the psoas to work." Yeah. And literally from this position, he's having to round to just shorten the obliques yeah, and everything. Sure. And he could inhale, and he's there. That's all he has. And so we did that for 30 minutes. Yeah. But after 30 minutes, he's like, "Holy shit!" And I, I, there was a whole another emotional side of things that started to come up. But anywho, he's he just started like, this, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I was like, this, "Yeah, well." This usually. <laughs> so, but. Today, I got a message last night. He's like, I'm feeling my back, but in a really good way. But I'm feeling, I'm finally feeling the lower abs, the obliques this no, morning. The place he trained, he was knowing no pain. Yeah. And you made him train today, and, and he's he, in no pain. And yesterday, first he time trained in, hard. Right. Yeah. Yesterday, he trained hard. And then this morning, he trained hard again. And that's so, been the first time. It's awesome. Right. So and we're talking seven. And this morning, he was at a one. Right. Oh, like, that's fucking huge. One day. And yeah. The next step was surgery. And what did you address? What do you mean? Psoas. Psoas, obliques. That's it. Glute max. Basics. That's yeah. it. No internal, tricks. Internal torque. No branding. No, but just tension. Simple. He just apply tension the correct way. Like they make him do the shit telling him like this is what you're supposed to look like. Oh, and this fine is the end range. Yeah. If you get here, you're fine. Yeah, so what so do they do? They start going this. here because and they you start give him an objective. Out. So it's they always start that crunching. Right. They, and then they, you know, they pump. Yeah. Because you gave him an objective. Yeah. He's going to, if you tell him to do something, he's going to do it. Yeah. And like, so that was, it's, it's not the point. Like, that was like the biggest thing, especially yesterday. I was like, that's exactly, like, I just want to be in front of people and help. Yeah. Like, if I could just, I, if, if I have people like that that come in, I could be at the gym 12, 14 hours a day. I wouldn't mind. I have that to the pills now. Yeah. Like, my thing right now is I want to take people off pills. I have 10 clients. I'm so happy. Like, I get the emails. Right. But they're doing better. And they start to hate the doctors as much as I do. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> did I tell you the story about the psychiatrist? 200 bucks for 15 minutes? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Wait, let me tell you that story uh-huh. real quick. Then then he goes back. But um, I have a client. We So, she's doing great. She's been eight weeks. She threw the roof on all the results. Everything is going well. So, we're talking about finally getting off the pills. No adrenaline-based, all the stuff. I'm like, all right. Psychiatrist charges $200 for 15 minutes. I was like, I'm in the wrong field, motherfucker. <laughs> Do drug dealers make that? I'm yeah, curious. Yeah, 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 so that's more, right. But yeah. but <laughs> <it's> legal, <laughs> maybe legal drug dealer. You, how do you all so sure about it? Anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a uh, title check on the past. Uh, mom, don't worry about it. I got him now. Um, and so I'm like, all right. So would you ask your psychiatrist, what are the specific physical symptoms of withdrawal from those pills because they're all different yeah. so you know like you can have uh, you know if you look at benzodiazepines what they do like you have specific weird shit yep. that are very specific to the drug themselves like would you ask because i don't know that part mm-hmm. technically i suck at the this part exactly and so she takes the psychiatrist comes back saying possible moodiness and dizziness 200 bucks, please. 200 bucks for 15 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, you talking about my training session right now. Possible moodiness and dizziness yeah, no by shit. the end of it. Um, I'm like, is this the fucking world we live in? Where the top psychiatrist gives you that shit to yeah. take you off the pills. Yeah. All she said was go slowly. I was like, I okay, I agree. We could have all said that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean obviously, by the way, yeah. don't go cold turkey, but... I'm going to burn that world to the ground. Well, that's the thing that I think is really important with what the work that both you guys are doing and and Richard as well is handling it on the the entry level where hopefully we're at a point where it's not so far gone where people have spent 10, 20 years on medication. It's like, no, learn to move and live no, and think and but, understand yourself in a way. What pisses me off is that it's the same thing as Richard. Is when you start to go off those pills and you feel like shit, they go, yeah, you probably should stay on it. Yeah. 
Because they because have, it's they your have fault. Yeah, because they don't yeah. have an answer. There's so no answer. We are, we are at a stage where even top psychiatrists put people on pills. They don't know how to get them off. off. Yeah. How the fuck do you yeah. put someone on a drug if you don't know? Oh, sorry. Ah, finish Cameron. the point. No, the other one's running. Yeah, okay. We'll uh, cover it in how the, the fuck do you put someone on a drug? You have no clue how to get them off. off. Yeah. How is that even ethical? Does anybody remember yeah. the uh, Hippocrates? Yeah. Uh, fucking, you know, like, do you, do, do shall do no harm, like the whole thing they're supposed to say at med school. I and just, so no one. That's crazy. It's, and so it's the same story. And when, when, so you get off the pills and you get a reaction. No shit, you get a reaction. I'm going to explain why when we turn the camera yep. back on. Yep. Right. So let me explain why you're going to have issues with the pills. The noradrenaline, what it did is it regulated your sympathetic response. Most of the time, either you were, um, it just keeps you in the center. So when you have a, uh, a freeze mode to low response, it would put, keep you in the center. When you had too high a response, it would keep you in the center. So what it did was, it, it basically kept you in the center. There it goes. There it Almost. <laughs> it kept you, thank you, Tyler, I did not die. That would have uh, been, you, by the way, story, your, your feet were off the bottom when that happened, which meant you would have went I was, oh, going, I was going to be good on camera. We'll um, talk about that later, guys. was on, but we can always <laughs> cut that one out. That's a meme. And, uh, fuck, what was I not No doing? adrenaline. Right, 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 right. Bu- so, buffer down. once you come off of that, you're not in the center anymore. So, but that also means that you have no idea how to deal with your sympathetic responses. That means that you're going to have some that are too low for whatever is coming and some that are too high. So you're going to be in freeze and sometimes you're going to be extremely angry. The reason is you don't know how to respond to stress anymore because the pills were doing it for you. Yeah. And that I think then because you've been on the pills, those situations are extremely novel and very exactly. hard to yeah. align from a somatic error standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're starting from scratch. Since yeah. it wasn't you doing it anymore, you just had to reuptake. Yeah. Right. So once you're going to deal with that, you have to be aware of what that is. Now, I'm not even talking about the actual physical dependency on the drugs, because that's going to give you some other shit. Yep. Like uh, you can't sleep or nausea is yeah. one when they're on it, but who the fuck knows what happens when they're off of it. Anyway, so can you imagine the upside down that they're going to get through without yeah. the pills, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when the psychiatrist goes, so when they have an episode of anger, they go, yeah, you need to go back on it. Or yeah. in freeze, yeah, that's what... And they basically saying it's your fault. No, it goes with the pill when you get off. And none of those things even address the, like the the toxicity right. risk right. of taking uh, this yeah. thing for <laughs> the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> like what kind of doctor? I, I mean, here's the thing. I understand, and we've talked about this before. If that's going to keep you from jumping right now, right whatever now. it takes, absolutely. Right now. If we put you in a straitjacket, it's going to keep you from jumping right now. Fine. That right is as yeah. important. I cannot... Live right. that down enough that your life matters and will do whatever it takes yes, at that course. moment. But that's obvious. But don't fucking sell out the rest of your life for this moment either, right. Arbit- Like there's just I made a post the other day that like yes. was very, very, very I thought easy to interpret. Yeah. It was for the last. It said for the last ten thousand years you think. Yeah. that um, it said that a, symptoms of anxiety were we would we would respond to it and say oh it's a way I need I need to move I need to take care of things I need to take action and kind of fix That's the what thing. the shaman would tell you. Yep, yeah, exactly. And then it's about the last fifty or sixty years. It's oh I should start taking mood altering drugs every day yeah, yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I thought that's a thing that people would be like, oh, that yes, seems to make it sense. It is a problem. Yeah. And the drones come out. Yeah. <laughs> and and the problem is some defending of, and, the drugs. Yeah, defending the drugs. And I get yeah. it too. If it's the only way that you found your way to this I in disagree. a moment. Yes. I, I'll say in a moment. Yes. Like, like if you did the ever do whatever it was. Bullshit. But now. I disagree. Right? And, yeah. and, but I, I can't invalidate someone who says, no, I did everything. They, even no, though no, you tell me there was a need at that moment. I agree. For sure. When they start to tell me this is the only way for me to get better, yeah. I disagree. And, with and then the, that need is still present today. Then how much help did you get? Yeah, exactly. but, it, but it's what are you relying I mean, on? And, and how right. dull are the actual extremes of your human experience? What are experience? the consequences of the drugs you're taking? Yes. Yes. So it's like the analogy of parenting. It's like, yeah, it's much easier to put them on the TV all day, but yeah, is it the exactly. right thing to yeah. do as a parent? Yeah. Probably right. not. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like the drugs is just, I think that they don't have a true understanding of what they're doing, but it's filling the objective of yeah. now you're not in my way. Yes. Now you're now you're just blanked out. And you can still go do whatever you're meant to go do. You don't know, like being a drone, basically. I'm, yeah. I'm, it's I'm, a matrix. I'm pretty yeah. good. Describing the basically. matrix. It's the movie. Yeah. I'm pretty good at coming up with analogies that don't quite fit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is one of those, this reminds me of the way that we've talked about where it says that, you know, taking a good paying job 
is probably going to, like working a good paying job for the rest of your life, yeah. is probably going to prevent you from being extremely rich. Right. Right? Yeah. Because there you are, yeah. stuck in the middle. You never really dealt with the problems. And sure, maybe it was brain and chemistry so in a moment here and there, there. there. But yeah. then what you've done now right. is lived this fucking dulled down thing pacified in this situation right. and never looked for the solution that hopefully you should have Zero found. progress. None. You no. are stuck without progress for the rest. And, well, that's your guy. Yeah. Here's, here's the answer that I get from everybody in that discussion, if yeah. you will. Those that I didn't just say, kind of fuck off, you know. Yeah. Like, is, is, is that none of them feel great. Yeah. Ever. Never. They take the highs away. I don't feel. feel fucking miserable anymore. And I, and I feel right. you there. Here's enough? the thing. I feel you at bottom. Rock, but I feel that. Say like, you know what? I cannot feel like this anymore. So great. Right. But you need to have a fucking higher expectation for your life is supposed yeah. to be than not miserable. Yeah. So yeah. let's get you is not miserable. Enough? Is that enough? But if you're going to live your whole life but not miserable. But isn't that the problem in the start? Yeah. Okay. Isn't that the problem in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. Is that yeah. you're supposed to go miserable. That's not good enough. The problem is that's not, yeah. they don't agree with that. They go, I, I I think yeah. a lot of times with that issue is this I am in life where I always said you don't go an inch but what you think you deserve. Yeah. If you think not being miserable is as high as it goes in life, that's why you're in the shit. Yeah. It's because you think that's as high as it goes. That's what you need to work on. Yeah. Your dreams. Get yeah. bigger dreams. Yeah. So in a, speaking of that, the dude, he took painkillers, I'm guessing. Uh, we didn't even talk. I don't think did did one medication. That I'd be curious to know what he was on. He was drinking a lot years. and then he stopped drinking. Now he smokes a lot. And oh, yeah. So whatever so. he... So basically going through life is kind of a dull... Yeah, I mean, you, he was a really good boxer. Like, oh. close to world class. Like, he was a good boxer. He was a very good bartender and cocktail specialist and everything. That's and how you met him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you can find people that need help in every aspect All walks of life. life. So he went from world-class boxer to... Uh... To not being able to do anything. And you know he got hurt? No. Coach put him on a reverse hyper with weight, did it wrong, herniated. And this is what pisses me off about... And this is why I get so pissed off. Like, the first 30 minutes, I think it was both of us venting at how pissed off we are at coaches that can yell very loudly in yeah. social media or wherever they are about just all this stupid pretentiousness, but yet they don't understand the fundamentals yeah. of a fucking exercise. Yeah. And and it just, it, it, it pisses me yeah, off because he, he's like, out. all they're doing is they're making you hit standard range, like yes. everything we always say, the standard range of motion, it looks this way and you're doing it right. And as soon as you fuck it up, it's your, it's your fault. fault. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's when we look at- But even the specialists, you saw yeah. that, yeah. Well, even the, but the consequences of that, when we look back through this now, and you see it in lots of the people, by the time they get to you, you know, at that point is, is it's well, I exhausted everybody that my parents told me I should trust. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So by the time they get to you though, this, these coaches who are saying like, oh, you gotta squat all the way to parallel, you gotta do this, gotta have, it. let's snatch, let's do whatever these things, reverse right. hyper with weight, for no fucking, if you never needed it, what was, you know what I mean? The whole yeah. thing, pushing somebody into that box, you can fuck up a lot of their life yeah. by stuffing your come. ego I into someone come. else's well, I remember training. my first fanboy. So I have this, is fanboy not the right term? That no. seems like a dirty term. But I don't know. The first person that recognized me. It depends me, on where this yeah. goes. <laughs> That's the I mean, I was thinking it's a Me Too movement, but yeah, yeah whatever. So yeah. the first time that I was out and I was in London no, and I went to a restaurant. Is, by the way, anyway. But and yeah. this dude came up to me and goes, you're Rare Barracuda. You're Richard Assad. And I was like, well, fucking hey, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Finally. Yeah. And so he recognized me from a podcast, uh, the first podcast I did with Mind Muscle. Right. And with those guys. And so we started talking. The dude was young buck getting into CrossFit within three months or six months, full torn labrum from snatching because his shoulder was hurting. And the coach said, don't be a pussy, lift the bar yeah. and went and it popped. So now he's out probably from doing CrossFit, CrossFit and probably going back to the gym or trust. I mean, how do you gain trust in coaches after that? Yeah. And so that's the biggest issue is usually when they come to me. I always say, don't fucking trust me. Like, I, I need to earn your trust. And we start having that conversation and I build the trust with the client. But you see that with so many people. It's like the loss of trust is like the guy that I worked with yesterday, he kind of like came in and he was super excited. He's like, hey, I'm here to give you my all. But at the same time, I was like, hey, dude, if it doesn't work, three you years fucking... Yeah. By the way, can I explain what I'm pissed off? Yeah. I'm pissed off three years 
And the specialists he went to see, why did he go to see them? Because they are the most famous on Instagram. Yep. They are the ones that are the yeah. loudest and that sell the product, yep. very expensive, the best. Good so package, he spent clean. three years on packaging and 60,000 pounds. Yeah. Right? Three years of his life, 60,000 pounds. Why? Because Instagram sells them well. How right. much was your assessment? 350 euros. There you go. Well, and a bottle so of whiskey. Cash only and whiskey. And good cash whiskey. only. <laughs> this <laughs> is Holland. Um, <laughs> right. But why? Because we are not them on Instagram because I refuse for us to be that. Yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah. that's what pisses me off is the system promoting those people that didn't do shit. Yeah. That Richard just, fixed in an hour and a half, and this morning he wakes up at a one. That's that's, fucking that's where crazy. I so <laughs> the system that you're part of mm -hmm. is doing that to you, not to us. Yeah. This is why we get pissed because yeah. we're fine. Yeah. You're not because you are buying into that system. Yeah. That I'm trying to fight to send nail on every single fucking yeah, thing. I think, I think the psychiatrist at 200 bucks for 15 minutes yeah. putting people on drugs. Well, I'll charge 200 bucks a month, a bit more, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, a month, but uh, an hour to take you off of it. Yeah. Where they didn't help. None yeah. of those people helped. By the way, 60,000 pounds without help. Yeah. Getting no help. No results. No results. results. Yeah. For that amount of money, no Fuck results. Any, this dude. is the system we are trying to fight. But because yeah. we're outside the system, this is where we get a thousand views on YouTube instead of a million. That's um, where I get pissed. And that's, but that's an interesting thing because as a, as a, you know, I've been a part of a few businesses as we kind of, as they kind of yeah. move around and building things. And yeah, like we've said before, is everyone who comes outside, they all, anyone will come in and tell you how to fix your shine, but none yeah. of them's going to tell you how to do what's fucking right. And that's, yeah. It's a uh, big, big problem. And it makes so much, it's so easy. It would be so easy for us to play that game, yeah. be shiny and yeah. make money off the back of people. There was a, I followed this, she's like fitness model, bodybuilder girl and everything. And she had this I, I, whole yeah. very passionate post about this whole, you know, stop following people that think that they're doing it right and don't mimic them when they're doing half reps and this and that. And then you see her do lap pull downs and she's doing this yeah. and I was like, Hmm. Yeah. Let's listen to your own advice, <laughs> please. Buy my creatine. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know. But this There's, is the world we live in, though. To... Like, some, some people have to say it. Yeah. Your, uh, yeah. Second thing I always made, uh, when you made the post, people defending the drugs. I was like, of course you defend the drugs. You're taking them. You have to defend the thing that is the thing you're committed that far to. In my opinion, <laughs> you know, it's, it's human nature. Yeah, but well, just, if you spend yeah. enough money on it and yeah. time, and you think this is your only way out, of course you'll defend it. But that's the problem. You that think this is the only way out. Yeah, yeah. And I think at that point, it starts to define your existence anyway. Fuck, you've yeah. already come to terms with this yeah. is permanent. This is but how that's the problem. And too. my thing is, you don't need to sell that fucking opinion to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, and, and I and, and I I don't know. I tried to take but, the PC route, but once people get argumentative no. on that tone, it's like if you even respect or followed anything that I yes. do at that point, you would know if you're talking like this, a yes. block, like no, a piece out. Is like, that what we want as human beings? Yeah. Are we? Do you yeah. do you all understand where we're going with this? Well, as a, as a society, is that what you all want? Because if you keep giving your money to the names we will not say on this podcast because they're shiny on Instagram, right. what do you think you're promoting? Yeah. Not us, that's for sure. Yeah. And that, that's why I lose my mind sometimes on some of those fuckers that used it's to quit, fucking steal crazy. from us and then criticize yeah. us. And then after that became like controversial with us just so they would get more views because they're going down. And after stealing my shit yeah. and, your shit, and your shit after that. And, yeah. And, yeah. Like, and I'm like, and they went to see those people, by the way. He, that yeah. dude went to actually mm -hmm. see those people. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, that's what you get though. And this, so this is a thing here that I had noticed since, since I came across Strong Fit. Is the thing Julian's, where Julian was speaking about the sport of CrossFit, if you will, yeah. when he kind of first came up through Barbell Shrug. It was a, ah, let's not just ride the jock of this system or this brand and yeah. fucking like, let's think for ourselves a little bit about yes. how this shit that's should work. Right. And then in meeting Richard and going through the seminars, Coaches Week, it's very easy, it's very quick for a person to understand that like, all right, that kind of is what's going on here with Strong Fit. What we're trying to do yeah. is we, it's you, we'll empower you, we'll teach you. And you do you it. You come in and you do it. And we'll do yeah. everything we can to educate and guide yeah. and stuff like that, but it, there is no fucking dragging you through this shit. It is, right. yeah. here you and are. And you have to do the work. Look at it and let's, and let's you know go. what happens when you don't do the work? 
sixty thousand pounds in three yeah. years. That's what happens. And and that but 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 that piece is the is the reason that I came to strong fit. Yeah. Is the is that like all right, it's different because it's fucking it matters. Right. You know what I mean? It yeah. does matter in this way. And um but 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 Richard's really you've taken this up the last I think for sure since for sure, the last almost two full years, it's really been the thing that, <laughs> exactly. not just in what you're speaking on necessarily, because it took a little bit to work that into Coaches Week, probably about a year and a half, yeah, two years and, ago. and it's, it, I mean, I think the hardest but thing is... But in Richard's training, in seeing and being around Richard, it is 100% of the things that you're working on. Like, yeah. I wish I had, if there's any publicists out there, or, or like managers that could just manage me like a rock star would, like I talked <laughs> to Julian about this today, because I really... Helping coaches, it, helping, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> but like helping coaches and helping people when I'm on a one-on-one -on -one experience, like we had, like the last coaches weeks in the last uh, assessment seminar where I'm like, okay, so let me show you what we can do very quickly within 30 seconds. And I have a guy doing the oblique opener. And, and this is where I tell people from the beginning, every time I say, I was like, you guys do not truly understand the power of the oblique opener. You guys don't understand the power what it can do and how much I can see by just having you do it. And so we had this guy going and we had Chris, which was for the apprenticeship mm -hmm. month and Chris is teaching him. And I was like, you're missing so much still. You have a lot to learn. And he goes, what do you mean? I was like, check this out. And so the guy's doing the oblique opener. I was like, lift up your chin. Don't hold your breath. Do this within five breaths. The guy's almost in tears and wanting to drop the kettlebell because he doesn't want to face it. And I was like, you see, he's not ready for this. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it, it's the same for the bench press the back squat the deadlift like I can tell when somebody is ready for the exercise and when they're not and so it's it's the ability to keep it as simple as possible that can gear the most stimulus and the most progress a in anxiety performance and, strength and, and it's a good point sometimes you're just not ready well and those aren't things that you can speak loudly about necessarily those, you sound that's like not a, a selling dick. thing it's like oh by the way i want you to do this real basic <laughs> you're not ready and yeah. it's yeah. you and you're not so ready and, yeah. and, and and that's that, so that's, that's, that's what laugh. it takes i, I you know? just laughing like yeah but that's <laughs> where that's a little bit that's where you are but we're going back to the same point of what do you want you want to buy something from me or do you want me to help you yeah. yeah. Do you want me to tell you already because you're gonna give me more money? Let's be honest. Yeah. Or are you gonna leave pissed? But at least I tell you, I told you the truth. Yeah. Which one do you want? Do you want me to help you? Or do you want me to sell you something? Yeah. Usually those two don't don't always work together. Yeah. yeah. And I think the hardest part is the people that want to pay for your time are expecting and something magical, you. and, and then I'm like, you. that's yeah. not gonna happen because yeah. then it's it, you want me to do the work for you. That doesn't work that way. You don't own me just because yeah. you pay me four hundred. Yeah. You would have to pay a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> So I'm expensive. Now. Well, that's going to be rich. We're going to be rolling out another anxiety program here probably no, in a before, couple of no, months. No, 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 no. Before that, uh, Richard, new program. I wanted Correct. to talk about it. Yep. We is going to be find your damn muscles. Yeah. Because I think that's the other thing you, with anxiety you do so well is to help people. Yeah. So find as though they're. And by the way, these are not necessarily unrelated. <laughs> No, it's true. I want to say that right. they're some of the, the most right. anxious. An right. Anxiety and depression symptoms, yeah. I think, are so often correlated with an inability to connect with yourself. With, Muscle, yeah. breathing, all those things. And I'll explain yeah. that. Like, <laughs> that was like the assessment yesterday. I start talking to him and he's like, stop it. Just get away. Because, I, again, I can see so much. And I was like, oh, you feel you could just cry if you want to. He's like, no, I don't need to cry, man. Come on. And I was like, yeah, Obviously okay. not. And so, like, I can tell exactly where people are. So, uh, the next course that I want to I've kind of put together and I got really excited about is finding your muscles explore an exploration cycle if you will so it's not meant to get you stronger faster thicker it's meant for you to be able to create better awareness with your muscles and better connection to the muscles and so my form of coaching and my form of training is I think has always been very much in a very opposite way of others I don't think a heavy back squat is a heavy back squat. I think the approach to the back squat makes the back squat heavy. Yeah. And 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 if you're not making love to yourself and the barbell and becoming, I I know. See, <laughs> I, like if when I I know you, I just can't. Yeah. I'm, we have a podcast on, so it's I, great. I know I I can only imagine but people like, going, "What are you just saying?" <laughs> yeah. Like for me, like when I bench press, I tell people, "I'm like I'm making love, but I'm the dominatrix. Like I'm dominating." <laughs> If I'm going a back squat, I'm a fucking rapper and I'm in a gang battle and I'm going to go fucking drop so that God, bitch. So you guys can say I'm going to gang bang the bar. No, <laughs> let's not go there. Yeah. This is a family podcast. Only exactly. when you got three so, spotters, y'all. Yeah. So I've, I've spent 
I would say, countless seconds. Very much involved in not just performing the movement, but truly understanding what my body is doing and how to engage the muscles and how to connect to the muscles. And so I think that the greater connection, the higher the neural output you have on a muscle, the better the quality of the muscle will be, which means you can transfer it over to any skill. Yeah, and so that's, that's really the biggest thing that's gonna be about yeah. this about this this program is I want people to spend six weeks exploring different exercises and seeing what allows them to connect to the muscle correctly. And then from there we can build the neural output, from there we can build the mobility, from there we can transfer it to skills. And now you can have a back spot where your back doesn't blow up or a deadlift or And a make love to that muscle. Make love. Always. But well, I, it all depends, but yes. What, what, and when you've been talking about this- <laughs> I like it. When you've been talking about this program too, is I think it's it's like, I think of it now as like a, it's like a foundational entry level yeah. thing because right. all the things that we talk about with strong fit it's from tension over position. Growth. Can you teach tension over position without knowing the fucking muscle or teaching yeah. someone to find right. the muscle? No, nothing that we do can work if you can't do this. Yeah. So right. actually, that would be my beginner's entry for almost to a seminar anyway. to anything yeah. in strong fit. But I'm thinking at some point even to the seminar yeah. is eight weeks. Find your damn muscles with Richard because, yeah. like, you can't do the the openers without this. No? Yeah. You, so <coughs> if we talk about tension over position, you can't do it without this. Anxiety, we can't do it without that. Yeah. Uh, and it's not What tricks. can I do without? No, but it's, it's so, work. And people yes. think I know you where know. my glutes are. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah. I mean, no, they're there, but you can't. No, you don't no, understand what it means to truly connect to your glutes. And yeah. if you do, because every time that I get people to connect to their right glute or their left glute, it's they know the exactly same. what happens mentally. Exactly. If it's not right there because they're not in the safe environment per se, as soon as they go home in the shower, they're like, what the By the way, fuck? Finding your servers? <laughs> yeah. All right. That's a and vice versa. But also, yeah. also finding that you can't find your right. servers. And then you start to wonder why. Because that's a big one. We're not saying everybody's yeah. going to necessarily find the stuff, but you have to understand why you don't what and happened? why you don't. Well, I think no, we, I, we a lot go of, through it. A yeah, lot yeah. of people who train don't understand what muscles of, our, of theirs that they don't have access to yeah if you will that's you but, but you're also because they've been told just break Moving parallel yeah. position of your tension it's that is it's, it's it's just it's a muscle so yeah i can contract my bicep i was yes. like yeah I but that's not I connecting felt, it. i felt it yeah that's like, not what we mean do you know what a pump feels like yeah, yeah. do you, you know what i mean do you know the difference between the actual pump and just the burn does it just cramp or does it spasm is it a burning pain? Is it a dull pain? What does the DOMS feel like? Where is the DOMS at? Is the heart rate elevated? Where's your mental stress? Where's your physical stress? Are you injuring or are you doing? Yeah, like there's there's so much more that goes behind yeah, how I like that moment it. when you uh, check off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're getting a pump and then on rep eight, you checked off. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why do you always quit at rep seven or rep yeah. right. three at rep four? Well, if we don't count, you'll do more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. All those things, they... they, they the foundation of strong faith. Yeah. If you don't understand that, I don't think any of the shit that I talk about you can relate to. Because it's one thing to go read the studies, but if you don't can't apply them to what it means to you. When I read the studies, I read them because I'm wondering about me. Yeah. How can I make myself better? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I read in the studies. I'm like, can I apply it to me first? No adrenaline, stuff like that. I'm like, how do I train harder? How do, what does it yeah. mean? Like, you know that analgesia actually is a alpha 2 receptor anyway. Uh, so it's n relating to no adrenaline. All I'm thinking is that means I can turn the pain off. <laughs> if I do this, correct, I'm like, Winning. now we're talking, exactly. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> right, that's what I read in the studies because I'm like, yeah. how will I apply it to myself yeah. first? Like we all do. How will you apply that shit? Be and you can't teach it if you don't know how to do it to yourself. Huh. So we always think that way. It's like, how, apply it to yourself first. Like people don't understand in Australia with the ET, uh, IT, IT, like, I remember all that shit? Yeah. So I started with a cyclical, a cyclical, and Richard was like, hmm. Then he went into taking it into anxiety, like in, the, was that Sydney? That was in Sydney, when, yeah. When you had that weird experience? It was, yeah, Sydney and then Melbourne. Melbourne was gnarly. Mel Melbourne, Melbourne was I just gnarly. wanted, I was oh, on that's ecstasy. When, that was the left <laughs> leg. Oh, you know where the crazy <laughs> shit also was when uh, extinction training. Yeah, the that's when training that was in, Can in Canberra. Yeah, in Canberra. Then that, that went off on this. So, so I yeah. I got the idea. I was like, Richard, try this. And then he took it to the next stage. That was yeah. crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, that was crazy shit. Extensive training is crazy shit. Like I'm in myself, I put myself in a weird state. That yeah. I remember I told you. Mm -hmm. It's like I had stuff from when I got beat up when I was 11. Yeah, it's crazy. came right back up. like, But not as a 40-year-old remembering the 11 stuff. As how the 11-year-old remember yeah. the stuff. I put myself back at that age going through the trauma because the trauma is blocked until you relive it. The problem mm -hmm. is 
You think you're going to relive it as who you are now, thinking about it. No, 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 no. You go back to when yeah. it stopped. So I went back as an 11-year-old who got beat up. Oh, that's that was crazy. Yeah. And so, like, that's why I say, like, I give people experiences. They're like, what in the yep. fuck just happened? I was like, yeah, well, that's No it. one understands <laughs> until they experiment that. Those are yeah. the root causes. Like, we <laughs> need to start with that. And from there, you build. And then right. it, it gets... So then, then I can explain what Reich said it, what, yeah. what, where it comes from. But until you've been there and suddenly you are eight... Yeah. And this Just and this reading happens. Reich and understanding the book does nothing. Does nothing for you. Yeah. Zero. Until you've gone to that stage. Yeah. And then you go, now you believe. Before that, you did not listen to what I said. No. Yeah. Not until then. Richard, is that program, is, is you, now this is something that could be done concurrently with somebody else, somebody say training in a CrossFit gym. Yeah. They could come in and do this because it's going to be a little bit of homework and discussion and homework yeah, and discussion. Yeah, so basically it's, 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 not, it's, it's not your stand, somebody's standalone programming for No, I'm not, six or I don't weeks. do programming. Yeah. I always say that I hate writing programming. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be eight weeks where it's going to be an exploration phase. So each week, uh, again, just like the anxiety one, I'll build on talking Talk philosophy, focus, yeah. structure, so on and so forth. And then I'll give three to five different exercises that they will play with for the week. And then we're going to slowly build up. It's going to be a lot of making love build up. A lot of making love. Awesome. Well, you'll be able to find out all that stuff is going to be at StrongFit1 in the link tree. Also on Richard's. Got the link tree on yours also. Well, when are you done? So we say what, September? Yeah, first I think week? first week of September. First week of September. Yeah. So basically, yeah. first week of September. There will be uh, pages open where you can sign yeah. up sign for up, it yeah. uh, soon. Sorry, so just check the, check the link at StrongFit. Uh, that should have you there. Anything else we've got to make sure we get out? The rest of it will be on the loop after. Seminar we'll so. Coaches Week in Amsterdam yeah. coming the end of this month. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you guys want to come by? Right. Seminar Coach Week. If you guys want on, uh, one-on-one assessments or that online was a assessments. Big one. Right. One-on-one one assessment know. with Rich. Yep. Yeah. Come to Instagram, we'll have a good I'll, time. Yeah, yep. assessments are always rich. For me, is you trying to deal with some serious shit. Yeah. So, I mean, not that yeah. you're not dealing with that. But so check yeah. out Rare Barracuda on Instagram. the mental health, I'm interested. Strong Fit One? No, Tyler. it's Tyler so, now. <laughs> Guys, it's all Tyler. So girls, if you want to send something, Tyler is married. Well, <laughs> no, don't send it to me either. So there you go. I stay out of the messages Sorry, on the official page anyway, yes, altogether. <laughs> well, it's your cover now, but yeah, so. there you go. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next cool. time. If you want to support Bam. the podcast, head on over to podcast.strongfit.com. There you could donate or join the YouTube channel. Also, go to strongfit.com. There you're going to find our online courses, education, and all of our seminar dates should be there as well. Head on over to strongfitlibrary.com to keep up to date on everything Julian's been working on. And follow Strongfit1 on Instagram and Tyler F. and Stone.